just three months, millions in the Western Hemisphere will witness an annular solar eclipse. Everyone living in the contiguous United States will see it, at least a partial dimming of the sun. But that's not all, because after the first solar eclipse, we'll be treated to a second one. Mm, two <laughs> times is the charm, that's I guess. It. Former NASA astronaut Mike Massimino joins us right now in studio. Welcome to eclipse season, I guess. Man, <laughs> and very exciting time. We're so lucky to have you too. I guess we'll we'll work chronologically speaking here, Mike. The okay. first one's going to happen in October. Yep. So why is it given that designation, the the Ring of Fire? Yeah. So uh, this this is a partial eclipse, as you said. So it's not going to totally black out the sun. So you'll still be able, depending on where you are, you'll see more of this or less of this. The Ring of Fire, meaning that as the as the moon blocks out. The part of the sun that it blocks out, the, the part that is remaining that we can see looks really cool, like it's a ring of fire, very bright orange. The corona of the of the sun becomes very visible, and it looks like it's a ring of fire, almost like a horn, I guess, of, of fire. Depending on where you are, you'll see more of it or less of it. Pretty incredible that people are going to be able to see, you know, not one opportunity, but two. The mm -hmm. second one in April, this mm -hmm. is the total solar eclipse. Yeah. The moon's still going to pass right there in front of the sun, but this time it covers the sun completely. And I think this is the one that people could, like, travel for, create vacations yeah. around. This is a big deal. Yeah, you could, people could always travel to these things. We have uh, a, a total eclipse about every 18 months, but they're not always over a place where people are located. Sometimes in the middle of the ocean or Antarctica, places like that. So the thing that's unique about these two, the partial eclipses happen about every six months, but what's unique about this is it's coming over land where people live and over North America, so people will be able to see it. So, but there's a, there's a line of totality for that total eclipse where you can be totally blocked out. Well, the, the moon will totally black out the sun, it'll get dark, and uh, that is a kind of a path that it'll take. You can see this when, online of where you can go to and travel to to see that. You, we, you've, you've seen one, right? In 2017, yeah, yeah. I was in that path to totality in Casper, Wyoming, because there was ah. one that went from the West Coast to the East Coast. Yep. But this is moving in from the South and going yeah. to actually, we put mm. that path up. Yeah. So we've got the annular one coming up in October mm -hmm. and then the total solar eclipse in April. These do have different viewing options. I mean, from a from a visual perspective, there are yeah. those at home ways that you can right. watch it as, as I made kids I made a uh, cereal box version with my son back in the that 2017. That is cool. Yeah. That's hardcore. It's <laughs> hard. That's the way to do it. That's like a great family project. Yeah, I should do it if I put it up on the site or something. You should. I mean, we have uh, we're about 90 days away from this annular yeah. one. What, what's the best way to actually view them? Well, that's what, the thing. The concern here is that you can you can hurt your eyes by looking at the sun. Anyway, is not a good idea. On Earth or in space, when I was in space, we had to wear eye protection when it was bright. We were out spacewalking. We had a visor that came down to block out the sun. You don't want to look directly into the sun. It's not a good idea at any time, particularly during an eclipse where that ring of fire that we've talked about can be very harmful. So what you did with the cereal box, with you know the, the shadow box, to, to yeah. see that's one thing. You do a little project. You learn how to do that online. But another way to do it is to get the right glasses, the right eyewear. Um, they are available on preventblindness.org because they're very concerned about people hurting their eyes and can actually go blind if you, if you stare too long at this. It's not a good idea. So you want to have some eye protection and that's a, that's having those special glasses that they make to block out the harmful rays. That's a good way to go to enjoy it. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting time. How about you? Would yeah. you go to a certain spot, or how do you? Yeah, I don't know. I don't location. know where I'm going to yeah. be. You know, you're talking about the last time, you, uh, Steve, when you when you were in Wyoming, you got to see something. It was cool, right? Right. Well, I was uh, do, I was actually doing a, a thing for the Discovery Channel, and we were in uh, in South Carolina, right in that path of totality. But the clouds came in, right? Oh, you're you're kidding. kidding. So that's the other thing. That's you got to check thing. the forecast, yes. right? Because you want if you Mike, can. Mike, don't ask us for a forecast. Uh, well, yet, be in but... a place where there's, you need good. You need you know the clouds can kind of. Maybe yeah, Texas. It'll still get dark. Right. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, you want to be in a place hopefully where there's no cloud coverage. And uh, I, I don't know where I'm going to be, but All right. I'll be I'm going to set you up with it. the Fox Weather Texas. app. Get your I'll planning tab ready to go. Yeah, we'll see where <laughs> And you'll be able to make one. a move right <laughs> yeah. before it all happens. Former NASA astronaut Mike Massimino here on Fox Weather. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure. Thanks for having mm -hmm. me. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.